for all our sins. Good morning and welcome to St. John's Episcopal Church in Lodi, California. We will be beginning momentarily. Welcome. Good morning, St. John's. How are you all today? It was a beautiful drive down here today, a beautiful sunrise, so I got treated early this morning. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Reverend Betsy McElroy, and I am the rector here at St. John's. We are glad you are joining us today. I invite you to take a deep breath, center yourselves, and let us prepare ourselves for worship.
and living God. Glory to God, Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Hallelujah. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart in the assembly of the upright in the congregation. Great are the deeds of the Lord. They are studied by all who delight in him. His work is full of majesty and splendor, and his righteousness endures forever. He makes his marvelous works to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion. He gives food to those who fear him. He is ever mindful of his covenant. He has shown to people the power of his works in giving them the lands of the nations. The works of his hands are faithfulness and justice. All his commandments are sure. It is yet fast forever and ever, because they are done in truth and equity. He sent redemption to his people. He commanded his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Those who act accordingly have a good understanding. His grace endures forever.
Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Christ. Jesus and his disciples went into Capernaum, and when the Sabbath came, he entered the synagogue and taught. They were astounded at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. Just then, there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent and come out of him. And the unclean spirit, convulsing him and crying with a loud voice, came out of him. They were all amazed, and they kept on asking one another, Who is this? A new teaching with authority? He come, he commands, and even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. At once his fame began to spread throughout the surrounding region of Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Jesus' mission, his ministry, was to share this truth, 
Our Gospel writer Mark makes this clear. He does not start with the sweet story of a baby born in manger. Instead, he literally plunges us, the readers, into the heart of Jesus' ministry. We are not even out of the first chapter yet, and Jesus is teaching and casting out demons. Mark does, doesn't waste time in his narrative, his telling of the good news of Jesus Christ. His gospel is driven forward at a frenzied pace and it is straight to the point. It is a gospel of action and urgency, as one might guess from his continued use of the word mutus, meaning immediately or at once. In this first chapter alone, he uses it ten times and 41 times in the entire gospel more than any other book in the entire New Testament. This rapid pace will continue for the rest of the chapter, almost like a bullet point presentation on Jesus' first actions in ministry. Today we find ourselves with Jesus teaching in the synagogue, place of gathering, just as Jesus has called his first disciples. The people gather, gathered realize and recognize that there is something new. Jesus' teaching is with authority that the scribes and other leaders lack. His, he's teaching the same things that others have taught, but people are responding differently. In fact, according to Mark, they are astounded. We learn here that Jesus' teaching is special. It's not going to be the one of rules and checkboxes like the scribes who had knowledge of God. His teaching is from within, from the very heart of God. And then, something unexpected occurs. His teaching is interrupted by a man with an unclean spirit. And this is the part of the story that causes me to pause. Jesus is interrupted. And let us imagine what that might have been like. Have you ever sat with a friend or listened to a speaker who has you so fully engrossed in what they are saying that nothing else seems to be going on in the world around you? Any interruption immediately breaks that spell, that precious moment, not only for you, but for the person speaking. This is that kind of scene. Imagine we're sitting with Jesus and we're listening intently. His teaching is something so enrapturing that it comes from beyond his knowledge. It comes from within. And we we might even have that glazed look that people get when they're so engaged that they can't take their eyes off what is happening in front of them. And then someone besides us, beside us, cries out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? The Spirit then acknowledges who Jesus is. The Holy One of God. We jump and are startled by the outburst. We might feel annoyed at this outburst, that our magical moment with Jesus is interrupted. Jesus might feel similarly. He was in the middle of a sentence, thank you very much. We may also feel confused because this is all new to us. We aren't even sure who this guy Jesus is, other than we know that we feel something different when we are listening to him. Jesus doesn't get angry, doesn't shame or argue, doesn't really even engage. He commands the evil spirit to come out of the man and with some resistance, it does. When
What Jesus recognized was that the evil that lurked inside this man was threatened. It recognized the love that Jesus taught and possessed. It could conquer, and he hoped it could conquer it. And so he tried to engage Jesus in an argument, a distraction, an interruption to him spreading and sharing this kind of love. This kind of evil still lurks in the world. It is an evil that lies within individuals and within our systems. We recognize it when it interrupts our lives. It tries to numb us to the pain when we witness what the pain we witness in the world around us, the pain that we cause, things done and left undone, as we say in our confession. And though it tries to numb us to the pain, we still feel it. We feel the interruption to the love that God injects into our hearts. It is a love so strong and so powerful that the evils of injustice, oppression, division, and hate pierce our hearts and our souls each time we perceive it. We are called to pay attention to those interruptions each time they pierce our souls. The message of today's gospel is not to ignore that interruption or even to engage it. Instead, we are called to name it and to command it to go, to let it know that it has no place in God's kingdom. Sometimes to make that kind of command requires, requires the whole lives coming together to say, be silent and come out. We will not listen to this any longer. The good news is that we are empowered with love through Jesus to do this work. And not alone as individuals, but with others. Jesus calls his first four disciples as pairs and then begins teaching to groups of people. And then he teaches through example. He calls us, expects us to together follow him, to drive out evil wherever it exists, and to heal this broken world. The people witnessing this interaction with Jesus recognize that this is all new. They respond, what is this? A new teaching? With authority. He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. Yes, Jesus was offering a new kind of teaching, one of example and one of love. A love is so powerful, it can drive out even unclean spirits. The week of prayer for Christian unity reminds us that we are all one in Christ Jesus. We are not alone. As we work together, we become stronger, and Christ's light becomes brighter as it drives out the shadows where evil lurks. Even though the week of prayer officially concluded this past Thursday, our prayers to live into the divine call to love God and our neighbor as ourselves continues. Let us renew our commitment to this call to drive out the evil forces that attempt to divide. And may the knowledge of our common identity and the experience of God's love strengthen our unity as children of God in the world.
Let us rise in body and spirit as we reflect upon the heavens. We believe in one God, the Father of the Holy Name, maker of heaven and earth, of all the seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, the eternal God of the Father, God from God, light from light. True God from true God, the God of not man, the one made in the Father, who through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under the conscious pilot. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. We will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and this kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped. He has spoken to the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Prayers of the people can be found on page 7 of your bulletin. As we prepare to lift our prayers to God for a diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for the Creation Care Commission. We pray for the people of the Holy Land, Haiti, Maui, Ukraine, and the Peace. We pray for those celebrating birthdays and anniversaries this week. Jean and Jean Ledbetter, Eric Cross, Eric Rossett, Edith and John Ledbetter, and Katie Jane. Let us remember those specific ones from our St. John's community who have asked to be on the St. John's prayer list, including please welcome Baby Girl, Katie Jane Dooley, granddaughter of Jeannie and Dick Williams, Jack and Marilyn Cook, Ida May and Love with the family, the George family, Corky family, Charlene and Dee, Diana Burkett family, the Wilson family, Katie, Martha, Dave, Kristen, and family, John Smith, and family, Pat, family. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we all be one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the heart of the party eternal rest. The light of the shall shine on them. We praise you, Lord, our saints who have entered into your joy. May we also come to share in the Lord of the kingdom. Let us pray for our companions and those of others. O Lord, our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against 
Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. Amen. Let us greet one another with the sign of God's peace. And we wish, it, wish them traveling mercies as they um, are as they relax a little bit this week. Um, let's see. I have um, a couple visitors here today um, from All Saints in Sacramento. 
and my ordaining bishop, the right reverend uh, bishop, Betsy Monnett. <laughs> and I swear she's not checking up on me. <laughs> we are very glad to have you here unofficially. <laughs> um, I think that's all I have for our announcements, but we do have some birthdays and some anniversaries, I believe. So um, would anybody like to come forward for that celebration? So would you like to share your names and why you are, what you are celebrating today? John and Edith Ledbetter. Uh, today, actually, today is our anniversary. Uh, 57. St. Paul's in Visalia. Wonderful. <laughs> well, happy anniversary. Thank you. Glad you guys are here today. And so I'm learning a little bit more about our little box here. Um, that people, that my understanding um, is, is growing, that, that it used to be a little tin can that people would put their coins in, and you could hear each year of blessing um, in somebody's <laughs> life, either by birth or um, for an anniversary. And then when we moved to this location, it became a box that represents our little chapel up on the hill. So um, we are going to be um, thinking about this special little box and, and how these um, blessings can be carried forward in the future. Right now, I ask if you turn to page 9 in your bulletin, and we will say together our um, prayer for birthdays and anniversaries. <laughs> Watch over your children, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall. And in their hearts may your peace, which passes understanding, abide all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> Let us walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God.
Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is truly right and good and joyful to give you thanks, all holy God, source of life and fountain of mercy. Because in the mystery of the Word made flesh, thou hast caused a new light to shine in our hearts, to give the knowledge of thy glory in the face of thy Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore, joining with angels and archangels, and with the faithful of every generation, we lift our voices with all creation as we sing. <laughs> Now, as our Savior Jesus 
Christ has taught us, we are bold to say. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And he is not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. The gifts of God for the people.
Live without fear, 
creator has made you holy, has always protected you, and loves you as a mother. Go in peace to follow the good road, and may God's blessing be with you always. Amen. Thanks be to God. God.